What's happening, gang? I had a viewer send me this knife recently. Asked me if I wanted to take a look at it and sharpen it. This is the Kershaw Bel Air in Magna Cut Steel. I told him, sure, send it on. Uh, told me I could use it, but you know, this is Kershaw's black wash coating. If I start using this thing, that coating's gonna get really damaged and I don't wanna do that to somebody else's knife. For my own personal use, I wouldn't care. Uh, but this thing is brand new. I don't want to mess someone else's knife up doing that. He asked me to even out the bevels, but from what I've seen, they look pretty even already. I put them on my edge tester and they both come out to 20, I think it was 20 or 22 degrees per side. Almost dead nut center. What we're going to do tonight, we're just going to sharpen them. Get a better edge on it because the edge is a little lacking. It had a nasty burr when I got it. I stropped the burr off and it feels like the edge went with it. I'm going to use my Gritomatic Silicon Carbide Stones. I'm only going to take it up to 2,500 and that's where I'm going to stop. Then we'll strop it and test the edge. Without further ado, let's get started. I am going to do my best in this video to show you guys what a burr looks like. Yeah, got that angle too high. First thing I noticed about this was it's fairly thin. So I've only had two knives in Magna Cut, actually three, uh, all from Hogue, and they've all been fairly thick behind the edge. This is actually the, the thinnest that I've personally seen. I can feel a burr up in the front, but not in the back half, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a few more passes back there. drop the angle on the knife a little bit so it's closer to about probably 18 degrees my standard sharpening angle so I'm having to grind through that little bit of extra material plus it's not my knife so I'm going a little bit slower than normal make sure I don't screw anything up they look like they did this choil really well but the actual plunge grind or the actual plunge line tapers right about here. So the more you sharpen this knife, eventually you're gonna get a smile right here. It's already starting to occur right now. I can see it. I'm not sure how well your eye will pick it up, but it's going to develop a smile. I don't know why, why they can't get that part right. I mean, they've already got this nice notch out. The grind should have been behind where they cut that out, but what, uh, I don't know what to say about it. Nothing for it. All right, I've got a burr in the back. Still missing it right in here. For you guys who are unaware of what a burr is, as you're grinding the knife on this side, the metal will start to 
curl up on the other side. It's basically getting fatigued and bends over. Cliff Stamp would tell you that uh, grinding to a burr is a bad thing, that you're actually hurting the steel. That's why he was a big propon proponent of plateau sharpening. Unfortunately, I never got the hang of plateau sharpening. And believe me, I tried. I just couldn't get it. sound like I'm putting more pressure down and I'm not what's happening is the stone is drying out so it's starting to sound a little coarser because there's no lubrication on it I'm still just using the weight of my hand but I'm placing my fingers directly over the point that I want to grind and that allows me to get right where I want to be You ever wonder why some knife companies, makers, manufacturers grind really steep angles? It will hide a lot of their main grind flaws because the bevel is so small, you can't see their problems. Um, I can definitely see where this is wider in the back and thinner up in the area of the belly, definitely the tip. I can see that all just from the bevel size of the edge. I've got a nice healthy burr. I'm going to try to bring you guys over and see if I can show this to you. We are looking for the burr. So, if you look at the very edge of the edge, there is a glint of white light. That is the burr. I'm not sure how well that's picking up, but I can definitely see it. That glint of white light is where the steel from the other side has curled up and came across the other. That is what folks mean when they say grind to a burr, flip over, grind the other side to a burr, and then do back and forth passes because you want to get that lip of metal flip flopped over until it breaks off or you cut it off. Maybe that will help some of the newer folks who are just starting out. I'm not sure. It took me forever to realize what a burr was. I had to get a cheap kitchen knife and I just scrubbed the hell out of it on a stone. That was how I discovered the burr. Once I figured out what it was and what I was looking for, I was then able to reproduce it on a smaller scale, although quite often I still had to grind a pretty thick, heavy burr to feel it. And the longer you sharpen and the more knives you get under your belt, the easier it becomes to detect. But there is that learning curve and that's why we always say, you know, don't use your most expensive knives to learn on. I found a lot of those Ganzo knives were perfect candidates. If you watch any of my older videos, you'll see quite a few of them. I use those just to show off stones and really to, uh, to learn how to sharpen. Moving on to the 1000 grit. Choil area is going to create a smile. I hate that.
hopefully you guys can see this craziness I see in the edge. It's starting to get the uh, starting to get the smile back here. It widens and it thins out. There's actually a little dip right there. This is gonna be the last stone. It's my 2.5, 2,500 grit. People talk and ask about pressure. I use the same amount of pressure on every single stone unless I'm just really trying to go hard and grind a lot of metal off. The amount of pressure I use is however much the weight of my hands are. I measured it recently. And I wanna say it was between four and six pounds. So if you're unsure how much that is, go to your grocery store, put your arm or your hand inside one of those, uh, one of those weights, weight scales and push down until it reads four and six and you'll see how much pressure I use. It's really not a lot, though it's enough to make the stone cut. I'm going to strop with my DLT XL strop. This is loaded with Gunny 1 micron and this is 0.5. I'm going to start on 1 micron. This is in frame. One oh two. One oh nine. Seventy-six. I think that's a fluke. We're gonna do another one. I don't like getting outliers like that that are twenty or thirty grams different than everything else. Anytime I see a discrepancy that big, I usually think it's something I did. Seventy-two. I'll do one more. One forty six, so it's more like it. Sixty six. I, I I don't know. It got sharper.
Well, I can't tell you what was going on with that best tester. All I can tell you is don't put your faith and hope into that thing. It's not a be-all, end-all of sharpness. It is a tool that gives you a general idea of how sharp one little pinpoint along the edge is. It doesn't tell you a whole picture. Regardless, I'll put in text here what the edge angles are on both sides. But that is the finished edge. I don't know, they're about the same, I guess. You can see right here where I was talking about that little smile. See how it's curving upward right at the very end? That will eventually be a problem. Right here, it thins out. And I believe this side. Yeah, this side you can kind of see it. It's got like a little wave in it. And that's just piss poor grinding from Kershaw. It's not even, so your edge bevels will not come out even and proper. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Y'all have a good one.